Like explained at the video about amplifying circuits, it is tricky to build circuits with a high gain. Many factors like temperature drift, crossover distortions or linearity have to be considered to minimize the distortions caused by the electronic circuits. In the age of integrated circuits, there is a large number of different microchips with amplifying circuits for many applications available on the market. A special group of amplifying circuits is called operational amplifiers, or short, op-amp. A chip with an operational amplifier has usually 5 pins. For the positive and negative terminal of the supply voltage, the voltage output, as well as for the inverting and non-inverting input. An operational amplifier amplifies the voltage drop between the inverting and non-inverting input. Let's discover the properties of an operational amplifier with the first circuit. Two 12V batteries are operating as voltage source, the inverting input is connected to ground and the non-inverting input to a potentiometer, by what a variable DC voltage can be applied to this input. While the voltage drop between the two input pins is close to 0V, the resulting output voltage is nearly 0V too. As you can see, the output voltage is not on a constant level, the display of the multimeter is oscillating between different values. While turning the potentiometer slightly to an input voltage of plus 37mV, the measured output voltage climbs up to a steady value of 11.7V. The voltage gain of integrated circuit operational amplifiers is typically 100,000 or more. A voltage drop of just 37mV at the input clamps would result in an output voltage of 3700V. Like mentioned at the video about amplifying circuits, the voltage drop at the output can't exceed the value of the supply voltage, so the output signal gets clipped. Situations in which the output voltage is equal, respectively would become greater than the supply voltage are referred to as saturation of the amplifier. If the input voltage is adjusted to a slightly negative potential, we get an output voltage of minus 12.9V. The operational amplifier of our circuit acts like a comparator. The output is maximum positive if the voltage applied to the non-inverting input is positive. If the input voltage becomes negative, the output will be maximum negative. The output of the operational amplifier can be either plus 12V or minus 12V, so it indicates if the input voltage is larger or lower than 0V. If the inverting input is connected to a voltage divider, the variable voltage at the non-inverting input can be compared to any fixed voltage. The inverting input is now connected to minus 5.7V, by what the output voltage alters while the voltage drop at the non-inverting input overruns respectively underruns those level. The fixed voltage level can also be applied to the non-inverting input, so it can be compared to a variable voltage level at the inverting input. In doing so, the voltage output of the operational amplifier gets inverted. The output voltage is minus 12V if the variable voltage is above the threshold. While the input voltage is crossing the given voltage level, a load connected to the output pin of the operational amplifier can be turned on or off. The load can be switched by positive supply voltage, by negative supply voltage or by ground. Accordingly, the load is turned on while the input voltage is above or below the threshold. The output signal of the comparator will start flipping between the maximum and minimum output voltage whenever the input signal is near the adjusted threshold. Because of noise, the input voltage crosses the threshold multiple times, while what the operational amplifier alters its switching state. Just slight variations of the input voltage, here it is altered by touching the wires with my finger, cause the operational amplifier to tilt either to the maximum or minimum output voltage. As we could see beforehand, a multimeter connected to the output doesn't display a constant value. 
we will see some later how to fix that problem. Without any further wiring, an operational amplifier amplifies the voltage drop between the two input clamps with the open loop gain. If your intention is to amplify a sine wave signal, an operational amplifier with a gain of more than 100,000 is nearly useless. A sine curve with a peak voltage of just 100mV between the input clamps becomes a square wave signal at the output clamp. By applying a portion of the output voltage to the inverting input, the total gain of the circuit can be reduced. R1 with a resistance of 2.7kΩ and R2 with a resistance of 27kΩ are forming a voltage divider between output of the operational amplifier and ground. The inverting input is attached between the two resistors. The situation is simple when attaching zero volts to the non-inverting input. The output voltage is zero volts and the resulting voltage drop at R1 and so the inverting input is also zero volts. What is happening if the input voltage at the non-inverting input is adjusted to 0.48 volts? The measured voltage drop at the output is 6.5 volts. Why? Without the feedback network formed by the two resistors, the output voltage would be amplified with the open loop gain of 100,000, so it would jump to plus 12 volts. A portion of the 12V output voltage is applied to the inverting input by the voltage divider. While considering the correlations in a voltage divider, we get a voltage drop of plus 1.1V at resistor number 1, assuming a total voltage of plus 12V. If plus 1.1V are attached to the inverting input, the resulting voltage drop between the two input clamps is minus 0.62V. So the output voltage of the operational amplifier would drop to minus 12 volts. But that's not the observed result. The voltage level at the inverting input is increased by the voltage divider until a state of equilibrium is reached. While the voltage at the inverting input gets increased, the potential difference between the two input clamps is decreasing. Remember the constant voltage of plus 0.48V at the non-inverting input. At the state of equilibrium, the output voltage equals the difference in potential at the input clamps multiplied with the open loop gain. While considering the very high open loop gain of the used LM324N, the resulting difference in potential is very small, it can't be reliably detected by the multimeter. The total gain of the circuit depends on the resistance values of R1 and R2. The resulting correlation is explained more detailed at the project page. The negative feedback of the voltage divider reduces the gain of the operational amplifier. The total gain of the circuit is called closed loop gain. The output voltage is operating contrarious to the differential input voltage. You remember the very complex amplifier consisting of three entire circuits to get a high gain? By using an operational amplifier, the number of components gets clearly reduced. When inserting a potentiometer instead of a fixed resistor at the negative feedback network, the value of the closed loop gain is adjustable. Once again, some salt is used to visualize the movement of the membrane at the output speaker. And that is movement. When comparing the progression of the output signal with those of the input signal, you will recognize only a few distortions. Besides the negative feedback at the inverting input, we can also apply a positive feedback at the non-inverting input of an operational amplifier. Let's have a closer look at the feedback network of this circuit. While connecting the circuit to a voltage source, the input voltage, those at the inverting input and so the output voltage are zero, but a slight random variation of the input voltage causes the output voltage to tilt either to the maximum or minimum value. Here, the output voltage is at its maximum value and the input voltage is approximately plus 0.1V. 
caused by the feedback of the voltage divider, the resulting voltage drop at the non-inverting input is plus 1.1V. While decreasing the input voltage to nearly 0V, the output voltage is still at plus 12V and the voltage drop at the non-inverting input is around plus 1V. Even while reducing the input voltage slightly below minus 0.2V, the measured potential is plus 0.7V. The operational amplifier will switch to the negative supply voltage, if the voltage drop at the non-inverting input drops slightly below 0V. That occurs at an input voltage of approximately minus 1.1V. Now the input voltage is increased and we can observe the operational amplifier switching back to the positive supply voltage not before the input voltage reaches approximately plus 1.2V. The thresholds causing the operational amplifier to tilt to the maximum respectively minimum supply voltage differ. Though circuit is called Schmidt trigger. The oscilloscope displays the output signal of a Schmidt trigger controlled by a triangle shaped input voltage. The output signal is low, while the input signal is below a certain threshold, and it is high if it is above a different, higher threshold. The output signal retains its value, while the signal is between the two different thresholds. The dual threshold action is called hysteresis. The output voltage of the Schmidt trigger depends not only on the current input voltage, but also on those in the past. The output voltage at an input signal of plus 0.5V can be either plus 12V or minus 12V. It is plus 12V if the input signal was above plus 1.2V and it is now falling to plus 0.5V. Vice versa, the output signal is minus 12V if the input signal was below minus 1.2V in the past and it is now rising to plus 0.5V. The thresholds depend on the resistance values of the voltage divider. Finally, there is an example of a single supply circuit using a Schmidt trigger. The input voltage is provided by a voltage divider with one constant resistor and one phototransistor. If the phototransistor is exposed to light, its resistance decreases, hence the input voltage is decreasing too. If the lower threshold is reached, the output voltage of the Schmidt trigger drops down to zero volts, hence a device, maybe a lamp connected to the output clamp is turned off while the sun is shining. A potentiometer operates as voltage divider at the inverting input of the operational amplifier, by what the threshold can be adjusted, so that the light is switched off during twilight rather than in bright sunlight. That's all about operational amplifiers for now. More examples will follow soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.